This forecast update effective around 1030 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on Friday, October 4th, 2013. And here's the latest look at Tropical Storm Karen over in the Gulf of Mexico. We're going to switch back to her in just a minute, but focus our attention on what has become the first winter storm of the 2013 season. Uh, Mind you guys, this storm is coming early this year. Uh, The last four out of the last five winters have been the snowiest on record, and it looks like we're getting an early start to this season as well. Last year, it started in Iceland in a 24-hour period uh, that was a massive snowfall for such a small area, but um, it ended up burying 13,000 sheep approximately overnight. Uh, This winter storm here, blizzard uh, advisories are now under effect, and uh, we're going to be watching this because this is the time of year when chances for extreme events can increase in likelihood uh, based on the season shift from summer to winter. And it is the hot air meeting cold that creates the clash of the titans. And models have been hinting that we could see a uh, major swell event set up off the east coast of the United States. Uh, We always like to remind people that Hurricane Sandy, uh, although a minimal Category 1 hurricane, created one of the best swells uh, in recent memory and uh, the perfect storm the the one the movie was made about um, was in October as well so we are in that time of year so switching you back over now to Tropical Storm Karen in the Gulf of Mexico. And as you can see earlier this morning, she lost all of the convection over the low-level circulation center and was moving off towards the northwest. Now, there is some re-intensification as the system weakened overnight. There is some re-intensification forecast. And how this is going to work out now is as... Karen starts to curve off towards the northeast. It's going to give her a chance for that low-level circulation center to move back up under the convection. So we are anticipating some intensification over the next 24 hours or prior to making landfall. Uh, We noted last night on Facebook and Twitter, it looked like that she had stalled a little bit just to the north of the tip of the Yucatan Peninsula, but in fact, it was wind shear that was blowing the convection off towards the east, away from that low-level circulation center, which gave us a better eye this morning when we saw it on the recent satellite uh, visible loops. But here's what we're looking at, guys. Now, we know that Karen is over in the Gulf of Mexico. Texas is going to be getting large surf conditions. Panhandle should be firing. But what's going to happen for the East Coasters? We'll take a look at how this is setting up and why we're talking about the possibilities of a significant or a major swell event by Atlantic standards coming up in the forecast. We basically have two low pressure troughs in here. We've got one that's set up northeast of Puerto Rico and another one that's starting to trail off uh, towards the northeast, east of the islands. And you can already see how convection is starting to fire up in three locations. We've got it right here at the tail of this or in the middle of this trough and then another one starting to fire up uh, in here on the tail end of it. And uh, as you guys know, if you follow our forecast, we always talk about during tropical season, you always watch the tail ends of fronts or a long fronts for an area of low pressure to spin up. And this is how it's starting to look. I mean, check it out, guys. You've got one, two, now three, just north of Puerto Rico. And you can already see some cyclonic spin with all three of them. As high pressure starts to build in the Atlantic, that's going to shift everything moving back towards the west. So we are going to be looking for some homegrown development, guys, in the forecast as models continue to suggest that this is what's going to happen. And uh, give you a little closer view uh, in here just north of the Bahamas. And again, here's that area right in here. Now, this is likely going to move off towards the north and northeast and be out of here. But it is the one down here that we're going to watch as it's going to continue to lift off towards the west-northwest and possibly get in our window. Here's the latest look 
at the Euro model, the ECMWF, that uh, has been historically one of the most reliable models. And this is for October 14th, I believe it is. But this is showing an area of low pressure in the Bahamas here and one to the just to the northeast of Bermuda with high pressure stacked up over here, Nova Scotia. Uh, this is going to pinch the gradient if this model forecast holds true. This is going to create some north-northeast winds along the uh, east coast of the United States with possible some major swells coming in here on the northwest side of this low as the opportunity for the pressure gradient to tighten would be good here and also in here towards Florida. Now, um, this is just one model run of many to come, but when they keep hinting at this every day in various different forms, it's something that needs to be watched because we could end up with a major system possibly breaking the eight-year record drought of a major hurricane uh, threatening up in here towards the northeast. So folks, we are entering, or what we believe we are entering, a very active period uh, over the next week or so on this side of the northern hemi we're hoping that you'll stay tuned for our forecast as we continue to monitor the models and real-time satellite imagery but it looks like increasing chances of a swell event at the moment uh setting up along the east coast of the united states that's all we got for you for now guys stay tuned for the next update